You know, we're less than two weeks away from this presidential election, and the latest CNBC All America Economic Survey just out today shows that this contest is a dead heat, both nationally and in the battleground states. So, what impact do you expect this election to have on the markets? Well, absolutely, Sharon, and it's certainly a nail biter. And I think it is going to come down to um, just a handful, handful of states, uh, similar to the 2020, 2020 uh, election as well. So uh, we encourage everyone to definitely get out there uh, and vote. From an investor's perspective, uh, this is likely to cause a little bit of chop choppiness in markets uh, leading up to, and perhaps if we have a couple of runoffs that we don't have a definitive outcome uh, on Wednesday morning, maybe it lasts till that the weekend, uh, we're probably going to see a bit of choppiness uh, in markets just given that air of uncertainty. But almost uniformly, when you look back over previous election cycles, while you do have that choppiness leading up to the election, almost uniformly you get markets that bounce back uh, at the tail end of the year through, through, through December. You get sort of that Santa Claus rally, right? So I think that plays out again. Um, uh, our base case is for a divided government outcome, and I think investors should take solace in that. If you go back over the last 70 years, we've had divided government uh, just over 60 percent of the time. So we don't anticipate uh, any broad sweeping policy changes, either far left or far right re leaning. Um, and I think this provides sort of a business as usual backdrop for, for investors over the course of next year. Yeah, you talked about uncertainty, though. A lot of people are going to be uncertain. They're uncertain now, and they may be uncertain. Some worry that they're going to be uncertain until January 20th, uh, Inauguration Day next year. What do you do with your money at that if you are uncertain right now? I think you stay the course, right? One of the things that we've identified is, uh, obviously, in the short term, elections provide that uncertainty. Uh, they could lead to a bit of choppiness uh, in markets, but markets are resilient. And we have this backdrop where you've got monetary policy that is moving away from a very restrictive stance to a less restrictive stance, and a Federal Reserve that is easing up on, on interest rates. That tends to be a very, very good backdrop. We've got corporate earnings. Uh, we, we've, over the next couple of days, we're going to get a large share of the S&P 500s that are going to be reporting. And right now, things are looking pretty good from a corporate fundamentals perspective. And also, when you consider forward guidance, forward guidance looks pretty upbeat and positive uh, as well. And so, when you look at the broader backdrop, when you look at the reason why to be bullish, we think there's a number of reasons to be bullish. Of course, there are going to be uh, elements and in, in areas of uncertainty, politics being one of them, certainly geopolitics, when we think about overseas and, um, you know, wars happening in the Middle East and in and, and Ukraine. So, uh, obviously, these are, uh, uh, areas, again, areas of uncertainty of the market. But again, markets have proven to be resilient, just, just even so far year to date, with the market up over 20 percent. Absolutely. Another factor that a lot of folks are watching are interest rates. And the day after the election, the Fed is actually going to hold a meeting to determine interest rate policy. Are you expecting another rate cut? And what's your forecast for the Fed for next year as well? Are we going to see a continuation of rate cuts? Uh, we are forecasting a rate cut in November. We think they cut rates by a quarter percent in November and another quarter percent uh, in December. Now, they've also signaled that they have a desire, a willingness to cut rates by another full percentage points over the course of 2025. Now, obviously, any estimate that far out is, 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 is a healthy degree of uncertainty there. Uh, it really will depend on how inflation develops, how labor markets develop as well uh, over the tail end of this year and over the course of next year. But where we sit today, the Fed feels confident that, one, inflation is, is, is under control uh, and should continue to trend towards their target of 2%. Uh, and after a weaker than anticipated July and August payroll print, uh, September was a pretty strong, pretty strong month, suggesting that maybe the July and August weakness was a bit of a blip uh, or a speed bump, uh, so to speak. So um, their dual mandate, uh, they're, they're, we're, we're effectively at maximum employment, full employment, uh, and you've got inflation that's trending. And that will allow, I think, the Fed to continue to gradually ease up on policy over the course of this year uh, and next.